I'm Greg Tepper. That's Greg Powers, and this is This Week in Cruton. Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete joining us as he does every Wednesday to talk This Week in Recruiting. Follow him on Twitter at G Powers Scout and follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter at Next Level D1. Powers, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, we already did this. We did. Earlier, but, you know, in case, resetting. Yeah, resetting. That's fine. Um, lots to talk about about recruiting. Recruiting, Cruton's heating up. Yep. Cruton's really heating up. Well, recruiting's always heated up, but I've discovered that the last half of June till now in July is like a whole new recruiting season this year with the early official visits. Yeah. And, I mean, the commitments have just and it's, been. And it's like it's your first time on the show since you're not speaking into your microphone. So, Ooh. really, the commitments are. Fun. Oh, hey, there he is. Oh, my gosh. Um, don't let him bully you. Man, he is a he is, he is a tad bit of a bully. Oh, Tepper finally gets someone on his side. Thank you. Two versus one. Oh, um, and they're both named Greg. And let's I can get cut both your mics off anytime I want. Let's go. <laughs> start with our prospect on the rise. Don't look him in the eyes. Um, <laughs> he'll take this as a challenge. Uh, it's prospect on the rise. I can't. You're the only one. That let's can start look with you. <laughs> you have to challenge him. Let's start with Desoto wide receiver Lawrence Arnold, six four one eighty. Uh, in a stunning development, DeSoto has another big-time athlete. This is a guy who I know you were awfully impressed with at the State 7-on-7 seven seven tournament in College Station. I think we could probably just pick a State 7-on-7 seven seven performer that we haven't got a chance to talk about each week as we go into August. Uh, he really impressed me with his athleticism. I always knew he was pretty good. I mean, he had, I think, five, you know, around 500, 600 yards last year, around 40 to 50 receptions mm -hmm. uh, for DeSoto. So he was their number one. Uh, receiver in that offense but I think this year he, he, will, he will have a chance to close in on that 1,000 yard mark and really become one of the guys in the Metroplex uh, that's talked about each and every week mm -hmm. and their offense is going to be really good I think again this year DeSoto's offense they had a little bit of a down year last year uh, but Arnold's going to have a big season and he has Colorado Purdue Iowa State Illinois Kansas Boston College Missouri Kansas State Kind of reminds me of like a Hakeem Butler type yeah. of receiver. Well, and this is a guy who uh, caught 39 passes for 513 yards and eight touchdowns last year. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting about him is obviously the frame is really good, right. six four one seventy five one eighty ish. Uh, but he's a, he's a good and willing blocker. You yes. know what I mean? He's a guy who is not afraid to mix it up and 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 get in there and stick his nose in there and, and block, which I know is something that you know Desoto's going to throw the ball a fair amount, but that's a, th a key thing that I know scouts are looking for. Well, and what I really like about him is he's not a, I, I guess for lack of a better term, a flashy type of wide receiver, but he is right. on the field. Yes. Whether it's blocking or climbing the ladder over the top of a defensive back in the corner of the end zone, he flashes that type of skill on the field, but he's a get-it-done type of guy in practice, and he's a get-it-done type of guy, as you mentioned in the blocking game, and that's something you can certainly respect about Lawrence Arnold. Uh, let's get to our commit of the week. Uh, a lot of different places we could go with yes. this one because there are a lot of commitments. But, uh, look, the bottom line is that when one of our super team uh, yep. playmakers, or the, the people uh, highlighted by Next Level Athlete in Dave Campbell's Texas football as the best at their position for the class of 2020, whenever they commit, it's big news. Yep. And this week, Prince Dorba, the defensive end from Highland Park, made his commitment to Texas and had offers everywhere. I mean, he was pretty much pretty much uh, across the board offers. But this is a guy that at the – this is actually true, and I don't mean to, to kiss my own butt here, but I will. <laughs> when he – if you remember, it was – uh, Shadow Creek was down whatever the, the final score ended up being like 24-7. And um, and Shell Creek had the ball back. It was fourth down, and Dorba sacked him. And I was standing next to somebody. I go, Dorba's, you know, whatever his number is, he's about to sack him and end the game. And sure enough, like he's just that guy that not only is he physically gifted, but it feels like whenever whenever Highland Park needed the big play last year, he always came up aces for them. And what I love about him is he's a guy who toils with his hand on the dirt, and he's <laughs> he's not necessarily one of these defensive ends who's has all that mass to take on offensive tackles playing and play out, but he does it again and again and again. Uh, and 
throughout that, he's u- learned to use his hands extremely well to redirect blockers, play off of blocks, find the football in traffic. And I think as he transitions into college at Texas, and I think they see him fitting into that Joseph Osai mm-hmm. type of role in their defense, as he transitions into college, that's going to serve him well because I think he's best used as a stand-up hybrid edge rusher in the Texas defense. And the other thing for me is that I think – he is. He's obviously getting better. I think there's there's an argument to, to be made that he is still on the rawish side. You know what I mean? That he's still got some room to grow as a as a playmaker and and to kind of refine some of those skills. Because I know he hasn't been playing football, you know, forever. I believe. Well, I think he'll grow, especially in the weight room. Yeah. You know, he's a, a physically impressive looking guy right now. He's 210 pounds. But what's he going to look like when he's six three? Right, forty. He's going to be a different type of dude, and he's a smart football player, and he's got plenty of gas in the tank. So those are the things that you want to check off when yeah. you're looking for a top recruit. It's Greg Powers, the next level athlete, joining us for this week in recruiting here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation hashtag TF Today. Underclassman of the week. Let's go down to Houston. A, a kid that we've talked about before. 2021 offensive lineman Donovan Jackson. Um, the the frame is ridiculous. Yep, he's six four three ten as a as a junior to be. Yep, he was the offensive line MVP at the at the opening in Frisco, and he named his top twelve, which is you know who's who. Yeah, it's it's a who's who of everybody. But Donovan Jackson is a name that is got to be at least in the early consideration for among the top prospects in the state in the class of twenty twenty one and. You mentioned we've picked him before, so it's not it's a name that people who listen to the show are going to be a little bit familiar with. And we're going to have certain recruits as we go through these podcasts over year, you, you know, that constantly come up. Well, when Donovan Jackson goes into the opening, uh, an event that has upperclassmen, and he's an underclassman and pulls down O-line MVP honors, that's worthy, I think, of being noted as the underclassman of the week. And then, of course, to piggyback his top 12, it, we mentioned it's a who's who. The schools I'm – most seriously watching on that list right now for Donovan Jackson or A&M, Alabama, and Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Ohio State, I think, probably pulled out to a bit of an early early lead. And, of course, you're talking about, like you said, a junior-to-be. So much can change between now and the time he signs a letter of intent. Uh, it's a, a guessing game, but, I mean, that's yeah. three three pretty quality programs. Yeah, he's, he's going to have his pick of the letter. The mix. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he's not going to be hurting for, for opportunities to go and play. And, and a guy who... I mean, certainly, you, you talk about a guy who's that polished at that young of an age. The sky's the limit for a guy like Donovan Jackson at Bel Air Episcopal. Finally, let's get to our recruit of the week. A recruit of the week uh, from a guy who starred in Frisco to a guy who lives in Frisco. Uh, Frisco Reedy offensive lineman uh, Nathan Anderson uh, is uh, going to go play in the Under Armour All American game. He announced. Uh, we rate him as a four star prospect, thirty yep. fifth in the class of twenty twenty, uh, and right now committed to Oklahoma. And a guy who, correct me if I'm wrong, we're thinking interior lineman for Nathan Anderson? I think Anderson will probably be more of a true tackle just mm. based on how he develops. He's got a long wingspan. He's very athletic. I think at 265, pushing into the interior, he's going to have to gain, mm. you know, 35, uh, you know, 55 pounds. That's crazy. You know, to you know that's about. a lot of weight to, <laughs> yeah. to put on a guy like Nathan Anderson. Uh, the cousin of Jack Anderson at Texas Tech, who was named All-Big 12 yesterday, so they'll be playing at – uh, rival team, so to speak, in college. Uh, and just kind of segueing into something a little different, taking getting away from Nathan, I pulled up OU's commitment list as, you know, just to look at who they've been recruiting in Texas and what other players they have rated highly. Man, Oklahoma has just destroyed recruiting yeah. in the state of Texas. I mean, we've, we've talked about Arkansas a lot on this show about how good a job that they've been doing in the Lone Star State, but – up and down that list right now, I mean, OU is building the foundation of their future on Texas high school football stars right now. Yeah, absolutely, and and it's easy to see. I mean, we've got Big 12 media days coming up next week, and I believe that you, you start looking up and down the roster, and obviously there's going to be a lot of Texas high school football products there because of Baylor and Tech and, right. and TCU and Texas. But you've also got stars at – Iowa State, and you've also got stars like it's it like the the export game in in Texas high school football is getting stronger for better or for worse. Uh, they're seeing opportunities outside the state borders. We had about twenty P five 
commits, I think, almost. And you do the research for the magazine article that you do mm-hmm. every year. And I think it, that number is probably around 15 to 20 that we increase in Texas high school football going to P5 almost every cycle. And then you have the fallout from that going to non-P5 schools. So the talent has been consistently on the rise, especially over the last six or seven years in the Lone Star State. And then OU added another big one this week from Bryson Washington at yes. C.E. King, who picked uh, the Sooners over Texas. That was a hard-fought battle and another versatile defender that they can put put in that defense in a defense that needs yes. defenders. They need versatile defenders as well. He's Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete. Follow him on Twitter at G Power Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter at Next Level D1. I guess we're doing this again next week. Mm-hmm. But then the week after that, probably not. I'll be back. Maybe. Maybe. I don't see why we wouldn't. Let's do it next week, and okay. then we'll, and talk then we'll talk. The week after. That sounds good. All Thanks, right. Powers. Thanks, guys.